Here is the modern periodic table. Take a look at the first member of the first group. I am not talking about hydrogen by the way. Even though hydrogen lies just above lithium in the periodic table, mind you, the true first member of group 1 is lithium. If you know, hydrogen any which way does not have a fixed location in the modern periodic table, right? Hydrogen behaves more like a non-metal and does not follow the consistent reactivity trend of alkali metals. While helium, if I talk about, is chemically inert and fits better with the noble gases. So when we talk about group trends, we start with lithium and beryllium as the real trend setter. Okay. So if I say first member of group one, it's lithium. First member of group two, it's beryllium. Having set the bar, now if we look at the first member of group one and talk about its compound, the compounds of lithium are covalent in nature. Okay. But if we look at the rest of the elements in group 1, they form ionic compounds. Okay. Is a similar trend observed for group 2? Let's find out. Let's see the first member of group 2 now. Check this out. Oh yeah. Beryllium also forms covalent compounds. But the rest of the members again forms ionic compounds. So that's quite interesting, you see, the compounds of lithium and beryllium are predominantly covalent in nature. Similarly, the rest of the elements in their respective groups are predominantly ionic compounds. This is the first anomalous behavior of the second period elements, right? Oh, and it's not just this anomalous behavior. You know what's even more fascinating? Observing which elements lithium and beryllium share their properties with. When we talk about lithium, the behavior of lithium is more similar with the second element of the group 2, that is magnesium. And similarly, behavior of beryllium, if we talk about, is very similar to aluminium. Do you see? There is kind of a diagonal relationship that we observe here. That's right. The same trend you observe for boron and silicon also. And if you assume that there was no space here, okay, just think that this space out here, if we just remove it, you will see a proper diagonal relationship out here. So how can we define this diagonal relationship? Like we just observed, lithium and beryllium are more similar to second element of their following group. That is magnesium and aluminium respectively. So lithium is more like magnesium, beryllium like aluminium and so and forth. And this is what we refer to as diagonal relationship in periodic properties. Now this leads to two questions. Question number one, why do second period elements show anomalous properties? So why does the first element in S and P block groups show different chemical behavior from the rest of the group members, right? Why this anomalous behavior? And the second question is, what causes this diagonal relationship? So, okay, if lithium is not, you know, trying to follow the properties of the rest of the group members and beryllium is also acting differently in second group, but then why is there a diagonal relationship? Legit questions, right? Let's address both the questions one by one. Let's start with the first question. Why do second period elements show anomalous properties? Now, there are many reasons for it. The first one is the small size and the high charge by radius ratio in their respective groups. So when we talk about the second period elements, they are the smallest in their respective groups, right? And uh, see the size is small, so radius is going to be small and charges in a group are going to be same. So if radius is small, this charge by radius ratio becomes higher for these second period elements. In fact, let's validate it with the data. Here is the charge by radius ratio of lithium plus, sodium plus and potassium plus. All three of them belong to group 1. And clearly we can see that lithium has the highest charge by radius ratio. Let's check it for group 2 as well. You can see beryllium 2 plus, magnesium 2 plus, calcium 2 plus and beryllium 2 plus has the highest charge by radius ratio. So this is one of the reasons why second period element shows these anomalous behavior. Yeah. 
In fact, since we are talking about second period elements, of course, there is no d orbital. d orbital starts from n equal to 3, principal quantum number equal to 3, right? We have nothing called 2d. So, this absence of d orbital results in actually a maximum covalency of 4. How? Let's understand it with an example. Here is boron whose atomic number is 5 and the electronic configuration can be written like this, right? Helium, 2s2, 2p1. And if we talk about aluminium, it has atomic number 13 and the electronic configuration can be written like this, neon, 3s2, 3p1. Now, in order to make compounds, we take the excited state electronic configuration, right? So, here is the excited state electronic configuration of boron. And you can clearly see that since there is no 2d orbital, maximum covalency which is possible here is 4. For example, the compound which is possible is BF4-. On the other hand, aluminium can have empty d orbital. So, excited state electronic configuration would look like this, right? And you can clearly see that there is 3d subshell available, though there are no electrons in it, but yeah, it is available. So, it has the possibility of expansion of octet because of which an aluminium is capable of showing six bonds. So, the maximum covalency which is possible for aluminium is six, like what you see in ALF6 minus. There is nothing called BF6 minus possible, but we do have ALF6 minus, and the same is true for the other members of group 13 also. But these second period element generally have a maximum covalency of 4 because they lack d orbital. And last but not the least, there is another reason which is when we talk about the electronegativity, these second period elements have the highest electronegativity in their respective groups. Well, let's check it with group 1 itself. You can see that lithium, which is the first member of group 1, has the highest electronegativity. Yeah? The same is true for all the second period elements. They have the highest electronegativity and that is what that sets them apart from the rest, which is one of the reasons of the anomalous behavior. All right, now that you've understood what causes anomalous behavior, it is time to understand the consequence of this anomalous behavior. Well, the first elements of these groups shows predominantly covalent character, right? For example, if I talk about lithium chloride or beryllium chloride, what do you see? These are predominantly covalent compounds as opposed to the others in the group which majorly form ionic compounds, right? The next one is the formation of p-pi, p-pi multiple bonds. So, if I take second period elements, you would see that they form these double bonds or triple bonds, right? But if you see these third period or onward elements, you would not see P double bond P, S double bond S. So, they are not forming multiple bonds with its own self, okay? Though you might see that P double bond O exists or S double bond O exists, but to itself, we can see that they never form these kind of multiple bonds. So, yes, this is again one of the consequences of anomalous behavior and the reason is pretty simple. The 2p2p overlap is stronger than a 3p3p overlap or a 3p3d overlap, right? Hence, this kind of multiple bonding exists with the second period elements. So, second period is different because of so many reasons that we have learned and now that we have understood what causes anomalous behavior and what's the consequence of the anomalous behavior? Let's learn about the diagonal relationship in the next video.